Hey guys, it's Phil, and it's a great day out in the park today. Good day for walking, and it's also a good day for answering some questions that people had about my trip to Japan. But first, I have a little video clip to thank the people that helped me get to Japan. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a quick second to thank everyone who helped on my GoFundMe to help me uh, with my trip to Japan. I want to thank Anthony Owen, Gene Crady, Craig Macon, Bibi Pansani, and of course my mom. <laughs> thanks everyone. Uh, the trip was really great and partially thanks to all of you. All right, so first question I got, uh, these were on uh, the anime section of Google Plus in the community there. Uh, first question was from Fluffy Waffles. Uh, I don't know why he said China, but then he said how much anime was in there. Uh, so, yeah, so in Japan there was um, some anime. I mean, I didn't really go into any kind of anime shops or anything. Of course, we did go into the Studio Ghibli Museum, so there was a lot of uh, Ghibli anime in there. And so, you know, you just don't generally see, like, anime manga characters kind of in posters and stuff all over the place. But uh, I didn't really see a whole lot of, like, anime, like, movies or DVDs or anything in particular. I guess I just wasn't going into those kind of stores. And also from Fluffy Waffles, he asked, uh, how was it at nighttime? Uh, and do I have any pictures? And yeah, I got lots of pictures of nighttime. It was really cool. The bright lights everywhere. But when you go off on the side streets, it's really calm and fairly quiet. Uh, even in like Shinjuku or uh, other parts of Tokyo where it can get really busy at night. You know, you go one or two blocks off the side streets and it's very quiet. Okay, question from... I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Taxis or ta Tassis? Taka? Uh, so how do you communicate, or can you speak Japanese already? So, I speak a little bit of Japanese, like basic words and phrases, although I'm learning more thanks to Duolingo. Um, uh, my friends that went with me um, spoke almost none, I think. And so, uh, it was actually fairly easy in the big cities, in Tokyo and Osaka, Kyoto. You can pretty much get around with just English. Um, you know, maybe some hand gestures, you know, pointing at this, you know, pointing at this or that, and saying, you know, you know, like, you know, where's a bathroom, and you could do a little potty dance. <laughs> um, or, uh, you know, you can, you know, use like a phone gesture or something, where's a phone. Um, yeah, um, but... Yeah, mostly, you know, just holding something up and showing your money and saying, you know, how much is this? And, you know, they, they pretty much figure it out, even if they don't speak English very well. But, yeah, it's not really that hard to get around. Um, toughest spot I had was a couple times uh, in the train station when we had to talk to the people that work there, the staff. Uh, they pretty much didn't speak any English at all. But what they had was a tablet with uh, Google Translate on it, and that sort of worked. It wasn't great, but it, it, it got us through. Okay, question from Indra K. Uh, how was the food? The food was awesome. Uh, I don't think I had any bad food there in the, the entire trip. Uh, we had some pretty interesting foods, uh, which I'm posting a video about that one restaurant that we went to, which is pretty fancy. But they had some interesting foods that I would not generally try and kind of didn't want to try, but since they were placed in front of me, I said, well, okay. And uh, only one was kind of not great, but the, you know, the rest were interesting and it was a, a good experience. My favorite food was yakiniku that we got from a restaurant in... Shinjuku. Uh, it was just outside the station. I can actually post a link to where it is if you want to check it out. It's in the description below. And if you don't know Yakiniku, it is uh, meat that they serve you raw, but they have a little burner thing on your table that you cook the meat on yourself. And But be first, before you cook it, they have like different sauces that you can uh, soak the meat in 
and then you put it on there and cook it and it was really good. Otherwise, I think we, you know, we had a lot of, we had some really good udon on, I think it was our first or second night there. And we had uh, a lot of family mart. Stopped at McDonald's one time uh, and I had their teriyaki burger, which was really good, um, surprisingly. Uh, I kind of wish we could have that here. <laughs> yeah, lots of convenience store food, family mart. Uh, lots of alcoholic beverages, uh, which of course they sell in these uh, stores, the, the convenience stores, and it's totally legal to drink out in, on the streets in Japan in public. So, you know, if you're going walking somewhere in a park or something, you know, get a drink, have, have a drink while you're walking along, and it's great. <laughs> I also got a question on the Facebook's uh, Japan Network community. Uh, from uh, Joe CMPD, I think that's right. <laughs> um, he asks, uh, what is a reasonable budget for a trip from USA to Japan? I don't plan on spending extravagantly, but when I do end up visiting, I'd like to be able to enjoy myself. So, uh, it, like I was saying, telling him, it really kind of matters, uh, you know, what you plan on doing there, if you're going to be uh, traveling around or just staying in one local city uh, but like if you were just on your own uh, staying around like Tokyo and Osaka maybe um, I think you could probably do it in like two thousand dollars but I do definitely recommend staying in Airbnb if you're gonna go uh, you get a much nicer place you basically have an apartment to yourself so it's bigger than the Japanese hotel rooms which are notoriously small and it's also cheaper than a hotel. And plus you get a real, like, authentic, you know, Japanese living experience. You know, you get to experience what it's really like to live in a Japanese apartment. If you are going to be traveling from, uh, like, say, Tokyo to Osaka, or further even, uh, then I definitely recommend getting a JR Pass. Um, they will cost about around $250. Uh, you have to buy them before you travel. And so the one that I bought was about $250 and it lasts seven days and lets you travel anywhere on all of the JR vehicles, <laughs> like trains, buses, I think even some ferries. And it's just a really convenient way to go. But you can't just depend on that because there are a lot of uh, trains uh, that you'll have to end up taking that are not JR. So you will have to buy tickets for those or get a, a card like a Suica or a Pasmo card that you can recharge and then buy your tickets with that. So that's all the questions I got. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the description below and I will try to answer them as best as I can. Um, and of course be sure to subscribe if you want to hear more about Japan. And check out some of my other videos too. See you next time.